In this video, we continue with examples from chapter 4.4. We have worked through uh, four examples showing how to check for linear independence or not, and showing how to check if a set of vectors spans R3 or not. So now we are going to see a theorem and related corollary. So theorem 4.8 is about a property of linearly dependent sets. Uh, set S equals vectors V1 through VK, where K is, you know, at least two vectors. So this set is going to be linearly dependent if and only if at least one of the vectors VI can be written as a linear combination of the other vectors in S. So this makes sense uh, intuitively based on the examples we've seen. When we had linear dependence, you could rewrite the vectors in terms of each other. So we want to prove this in all cases. So to prove the theorem in one direction, when we say one direction, we mean uh, the forward direction or the backwards direction because this is an if and only if statement. So we are going to assume that S is a linearly dependent set. So we call this a forward direction because we said linearly dependent if and only if. So then there are going to be scalars, not all zero, such that these scalars multiplied by the elements of V equals zero. That's based on the definition of linearly dependent we saw earlier. Then one of the coefficients must be non-zero. So generality is lost by assuming that, um, no generality is lost by assuming that that's the first coefficient. So we'll assume C1 is not zero and of course, it could arbitrarily be any of the values C's that are not zero. Then if we rearrange and solve in terms of C1, V1, we get C1, V1 equals uh, negative of all of the other components of this equation because we just bumped everything to the other side. Then we can divide everything through by C1. So we can say V1 equals this linear combination of the other vectors. And so, um, that shows that if we assume linear dependence, then we are able to write any arbitrary vector V1 as a combination of the others as long as the scalar is not zero. So now we're gonna go in the other direction. We're gonna assume the vector V1 is a linear combination of all the other vectors. So that's, means we're able to say V1 equals some combination of the other vectors with scalars C, through CK, and it's arbitrary that we chose vector one, it could be any of these vectors, and the same uh, principles would hold. Then if we bump the V1 to the other side by subtracting it, then we get uh, this equation negative V1 plus all the other uh, C2, V2 through C3, CK, VK added up there, equals zero. And so there's at least one coefficient, the negative one here, on the V1 that's not zero, and you can conclude then that S is linearly dependent because it meets that definition. Here's a corollary. A corollary is something that comes out of a theorem after having proved the theorem. So the two vectors U and V in the vector space V are linearly dependent if and only if one is a scalar multiple of the other. And so we showed that in our proof. And then uh, make sure you remember this important remark that the zero vector is always a scalar multiple of another vector in a vector space. It might seem kind of trivial, but remember that uh, zero is just, zero vectors is zero times the other values in the vector. So here's an example where we're testing for linear dependence of two vectors. So if you've got the set uh, V1, V2, where V1 is one, two, zero, and you can see that down here in this diagram. And V2 is negative two, two, and one, and you can see that projected out here into 2D space in this diagram. Uh, this set is linearly independent because we can see that V1 and V2 are not scalar multiples of each other. Uh, we can see they're in different planes and not multiples. Uh, visually, if we look at B, the set of these vectors 4, negative 4, 2, and negative 2, 2, and 1, you can see, well, they're just scalar multiples of one another. They lay on the same line. So that's linearly dependent because you could rewrite 
vector v1 as negative 2 times v2, as we can see in this picture in here. So you can always graphically check for linear dependence of two vectors. 